Hey everyone, I'm QWebDev, and welcome to part one of the Domino Computing series. In this video, we'll cover fundamental computer logic and see how we can recreate it with dominoes, all leading up to a fully functional calculator that can add numbers together. To build these circuits, I'm going to be using Topplebit. If you don't know, Topplebit is a lightweight domino simulation game that I made previously for the sake of experimenting with dominoes. I've covered how it works in two of my previous videos, and you can also download it for free if you want to follow along. All those links are in the description. But anyway, let's get to it. Before we can do any sort of computing, we first need to understand how computers represent information. Now, as you probably know, computers run entirely on binary. Binary is a simple number system that only uses two values, 0 and 1. A single unit of binary data is called a bit, short for binary digit. Electronically, this is usually represented by different voltage levels across a wire. A high voltage is considered a 1, and a low voltage is a 0. Luckily, dominoes give us a similar way to represent bits. A domino line is always in one of two states, standing up or falling over. So we'll use a line of falling dominoes to represent a 1, and standing dominoes to represent a 0. Now that we have a way to represent binary, let's look at how we can manipulate bits to perform computation. Traditionally, this is done using logic gates. A logic gate is a smaller circuit that takes one or more inputs and produces an output depending on those inputs and what type of gate it is. At its core, a computer is more or less just a massive network of these gates working together. First up is the OR gate, which is represented by this symbol in diagrams. We can describe its behavior using a truth table. A truth table is a chart that shows the output of a circuit given every possible combination of inputs. As you can see, the OR gate outputs a 1 when at least one of its inputs is 1. If both inputs are 0, it outputs 0. Building this with dominoes is trivial. We can simply merge two lines together so that the output gets pushed if either of the inputs are knocked over. The next logic gate is a slight variation of the OR gate called the exclusive OR gate, or XOR for short. It behaves in the same way as the OR gate, except when both inputs are 1, it outputs 0. That's the exclusive part. It's one or the other input, but not both. The trick to building this with dominoes is to cross the input lines before merging them together. When only one input is hit, it travels through the cross, exits from the other end, and makes its way to the output. But when both inputs are hit, they use the cross at the same time and stop each other before either of them can make it out. Next is the AND gate. The AND gate outputs 1 only when both of its inputs are 1. In any other case, it outputs 0. Building this gate's a little trickier than the others, so let's go through it step by step. Let's start off with this circuit, which only has one input and one output. If I hit the input, the wave splits into two, and the shorter line blocks the longer one, preventing it from reaching the output. So this circuit just cancels itself out, and its output is always 0. To make this an AND gate, we can add a second input that blocks the blocking line. On its own, the second input doesn't do much. But if you hit both inputs together, the blocking path gets blocked by the second input, allowing the first path to make its way straight to the output. So only with both inputs working together will the output fall. And finally, there's the NOT gate, which is also called the inverter. Unlike the other gates, the NOT gate only has one input and one output and the output is simply the opposite of the input. A 0 becomes a 1, and a 1 becomes a 0. Building this with dominoes is pretty simple. Wait a minute. If the input is 0, then the output is 1. If no dominoes are falling, the output needs to be knocked over. What? Yeah, making a knock gate isn't as simple as it sounds. Somehow, we need the output to fall without us touching any of the dominoes, which is obviously impossible. But luckily there's a workaround. We'll give the knock gate a second input, and this new input is a constant, meaning it's always guaranteed to fall. If the input is 0, the constant knocks the output over, and if the input is 1, it blocks the constant from reaching it. So this works, but it's not very reliable since you have to deal with a constant which gets messy and can lead to annoying timing constraints. So in practice, we're generally going to avoid the knock gate as much as we can. Anyway, now that we know how to build each logic gate, let's see how we can combine them to create more interesting behavior. 
So we're going to build a circuit that can add two numbers together. Naturally, the first question is, how do we use bits to represent numbers? Well, think about our standard decimal number system. Decimal uses 10 digits, and each place value is 10 times larger than the previous one. This allows us to easily write any value we want despite only having those 10 digits. Binary works no differently, except we only have two digits now, so each place value is twice as large as the last. Instead of the ones, tens, and hundreds place, in binary we have the ones, twos, fours, eights, and so on. For example, what does the binary number 1101 represent? Well, there's a 1 in the 8th place, which adds 8 to the total. There's a 1 in the 4th place, so we add that too. There's a 0 in the 2's place, so we ignore that. And finally, there's a 1 in the 1's place, so we add 1. This leaves us with 8 plus 4 plus 1, which is 13. So 1101 is binary for 13. Next, how do we add binary numbers together? Well, as you might have guessed, it's exactly the same as in decimal. Let's take our number 13 and add, say, 14 to it. 14 in binary is 1110, because 8 plus 4 plus 2 equals 14. Now we just add them together in the exact same way as you would in decimal. We start with the 1's place. 1 plus 0 is 1, so we write a 1 in the answer. Next, the 2's. 0 plus 1 is 1, so we write another 1. Now the 4's. 1 plus 1 is 2, now, in binary, we don't have a digit for the number 2, so instead, we write a 0 in the answer and carry a 1 into the next place value. And finally, the 8s. 1 plus 1 plus the carried 1 equals 3. Again, we don't have a 3 in binary, so we write a 1 in our answer and carry a 1 to the next place value. Now we just add that extra carry to the answer and we're done. Our final answer is 11011, which is 27 and 13 plus 14 is in fact 27, so that checks out. Now that we have the process down, let's think about how we can replicate it using logic gates. The first step is to add the two digits in the ones place together. So we need a circuit that has two inputs and two outputs. One output is the sum, or the value we'd write in the answer, and the other is the carry that we'd move over to the next calculation. This circuit is called a half adder. Here's its truth table. Let's see if we can find any patterns in the outputs that hint towards how we can build it. First, the sum output. As you can see, the sum is 1 only when one of the inputs are 1, but not both. That sounds a lot like an XOR gate. And for the carry, its output is 1 only when both inputs are 1, which sounds a lot like an AND gate. So in fact, a half adder is built by using an XOR gate to compute the sum, and an AND gate to compute the carry. This is what a domino half adder looks like. It's basically just an XOR and AND gate merged together. When the first input is 1, the wave splits, passes through the XOR gate, knocks over the sum, and blocks itself from reaching the carry. When the second input is 1, it does just about the same thing. It goes through the XOR gate and knocks over the sum. When both are hit together, however, the first input splits, the waves cancel each other out in the XOR gate, and the other wave is allowed to knock over the carry without touching the sum. So in short, the half adder takes two bits and tells you if they add up to one or two. It really doesn't get simpler than that. Now, the half adder only covers the first step in addition. Every subsequent calculation involves three bits, the two digits from the numbers and the potential carry from the previous calculation. The half adder only takes two inputs, so it can't handle this. And that's why it's called a half adder. It only does half of what you need to perform complete addition. What we need is a full adder, a full adder is capable of adding together three bits, and also outputs a sum and a carry. This is what a domino full adder looks like. You can see that it's essentially made out of two half adders. Yep, a full adder is made of two half adders. What a surprise. The full adder is a little too complicated to explain in a lot of detail, but basically it adds together the first two bits, and then adds the sum of that calculation to the third bit. A full adder is actually all that we need to be able to add any two binary numbers together. This is the design of our final adder circuit. We'll use a half adder for the first step, and a full adder for all subsequent calculations, connecting the carry outputs of each adder to the inputs of the next one as necessary. Also, the digits of both numbers are paired up by place value so they can be added together easily. This entire design is called a ripple carry adder, 
because the carry outputs propagate down the line through each adder like a rippling wave. In our case, we're going to make a 4-bit adder, which can add numbers together up to 15 and output a 5-bit sum of up to 30. To do this, we'll need one half adder and three full adders. All right, time to go build this thing, and I'll be right back. A few moments later. And here it is. You can see the three full adders and the half adder right here. The inputs are just below them, and they're all zero at the moment. If I fill in these gaps between the dominoes, I can make them a one. I also added some extra circuitry over here, and this is basically just a big timer circuit. As it falls, it triggers each calculation to happen one after another. It doesn't change any of the core logic though, it just makes the timing a lot easier to manage. Anyway, I'm going to test this using the same example we did before, which was 13 plus 14. In binary, those are 1101 and 1110, respectively, so this is how we'll configure the inputs of the adder. Now, all we have to do is hit this trigger to start the calculation, and hopefully we get 27. Alright, here we go. Cue the overly intense music in 3, 2, 1, go. go, go. Alright, it's finished, and the answer is 11011, which once again is 27. So this is a working 4-bit ripple carry adder made entirely out of dominoes. Cool! If you want to try it out for yourself, I'll post the save file in my Discord server, which I welcome everyone to join. The link is in the description. In the next video, we'll take a look at improving the circuit's design, and maybe even adding some more interesting functionality. Be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss that. On a final note, I'd like to mention that the channel has been picking up quite a bit recently, and I'm really excited to see the increasing levels of interest. And thanks to that, I'm also starting to get access to a lot of new YouTube features, including channel memberships. So if you're enjoying the videos and would like to support future content, please consider becoming a member. It means a lot to me. And with that, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.